the analysis of gender bias and stereotypes in broadcast meteorology. So welcome, Caitlin. Hi everybody, good afternoon. I hope you all are enjoying the time at the conference today. Thank you all so much for staying this late, I guess in the game, if you will. I'm here to present a little bit of my research that I conducted while I was a senior at the University of North Dakota. It's in gender bias and stereotypes in the field of broadcast meteorology. So I wanna start off with a little bit of a brief background. The term weather girl and weathercaster arose about 70 years ago in the 1950s. And according to Robert Henson in his book, Weather on the Air, it was in this era that women could be considered weathercasters as long as the main focus was kept on their anatomy, their hairstyle, and their clothing at this point in time. Now, a couple of decades later in the 1980s, that's when we did see a number of female degreed meteorolo meteorologists increase along with the number of female meteorologists employed increased as well. So it took a little bit of time, but things got a little bit better as we continued to progress throughout the years. Now, GMA's chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, has spoken out on the term weather girl and how she believes that it should become a thing of the past. And also, Jen Carpagna, who I know was here earlier today, she has spoken out on the expectations of female meteorologists and how she believes that they are a little bit different in comparison to their male counterparts, especially in regards to their appearance. So I did this research to see if folks still feel this way, especially females in the field. And in this sense, the methodology I took was I sent three separate emails across the country last February. So I do apologize if you did get some spam from me. I had one person actually ask me if I was spam. They responded to my email and asked, how do I know you're not spam? And then I was faced with the dilemma, how do I prove to this person that I'm a real person? So I sent them my social media and hopefully they took the survey. But Overall, uh, Dr. Maybach graciously provided me his list of 2,189 email addresses of broadcast myths across the country, and that's exactly who I sent the survey to. The survey itself had 15 questions, and five of them were demographic-based, and I had a total of 351 responses, so that's overall a 16% response rate. Now, with the demographic questions in place, I determined that the average weather team size is 4.6, so close to five uh, meteorologists per weather team. We also did see female meteorologists were just shy of two per station, which means that less than 50% of meteorologists at each station are female. So we already see a disparity in between genders in this case already. Now, gender of participants, we had the majority of participants that answered the survey were male. They made up 66% of my survey, and female participants made up 34% of the survey. Now, the job positions held by the participants, we can clearly see that most of the job positions held by participants were in the chief category, but one thing I'd like to point out about this chief category is we can clearly see a lot more blue in this column in, cons in comparison to red and red indicates a female gender and blue indicates male. So we already see a difference in between the amount of males as chiefs in comparison to females. Closer towards the weekday morning, we see a little bit more of a 60-40% difference in between the amount of males in comparison to females. But where we see more females in comparison to males is if we jump towards the weekend morning position. So that's the only category in this process that we did see more females employed in that job position in comparison to males. Now the market size of the participants, most of the participants who were a part of the survey were within the 21 to 100 market size. We did have people participate from every market size, which is fantastic because the more the merrier, if you will. In the top 20 market, I do want to point out that we can see a clear difference in between the amount of males and females. A vast majority of participants in the top 20 market are males, and we do see just a little bit of red on top of that blue column in the top 20 market, indicating that there is just very little amount of females in that market in comparison to males. 
Now I know this graphic, there's a lot going on here, so I wanna break it down for you, give you a little baseline before I get into a little bit more. The y-axis is the percentage of participants, and the x-axis is their market size. This graph is comparing their markets and their degrees at this point in time. That blue coloring is where we can see the meteorology undergraduates, and we can clearly see across all the market sizes, that is the majority of the education across the board so far. That red coloring just above that blue coloring, that means that they have a meteorology master degree. And we can see a larger amount of that closer towards the top 100 market. That gray coloring is a meteorology certificate. And I do wanna point out the largest amount of folks who took this survey that are, have communication or journalism degrees and are working as broadcast meteorologists are in the 151 to 210 market size. And that's that green coloring. Another thing I wanna point out before I move forward is that the gray coloring, again, that's the meteorology certificate, and the orange coloring, which means that they're working on their meteorology degree, the highest amount of participants with either one of those cases are in a top 20 market, which indicates that the most amount of meteorologists that are still working on their degree are in a top 20 market or only have a meteorology certificate. Now, I asked participants how many demeaning or obscene comments they received from viewers per month. And most of the participants received zero to five demeaning or obscene comments per month. And that's not too bad, right? I assume that quite a few of us out there receive quite a few demeaning comments, obviously depending on your position and how, how long you've been at your station, probably. But we can see as we get into larger numbers of comments, unfortunately, we do see that red sticking around. And again, that red indicates the amount of females who took this survey. So as we get closer towards a 16 to 20 comment range, we see that blue start to disappear. So less males receive demeaning or obscene comments. And we actually did start to see an increase in females who selected 30 plus in comparison to the options of 16 to 20 to 21 to 25. So definitely not great news there. Now, I also asked participants how they feel about the term weather girl and if they've heard it before. Believe it or not, most people have heard this term, so uh, only a couple of folks have not heard it and they identified it as male and almost everybody believed that it is a demeaning term and hopefully they believe that it should be a thing of the past. Now a couple of people have preferred not to answer, but we also did see a number of people who also did not find it demeaning and of course the color scheme is the same, so blue is male and red is female. Now I asked the same thing about weather boy before, not weather man, so weather boy to make it a little more equal and whether or not they believe it is to me. And most males actually have heard this term before, but most females have not heard this term, but still we wanna point out that a fair and decent amount of males have not heard this term before, but even though a lot of people have not heard the term, they still do believe that it is demeaning, but we still do see a little bit of a difference in the amount of males who believe that it is not demeaning in comparison to the amount of females who believe it's not demeaning. Now, in my demographic questions, if you answered the question that you were a female gender woman who selected yes, and in my opinion, that's seven too many, and we can see that with the blue coloring right there. Now I wanted to compare the female obligation to wear revealing clothing and their market size. We can see all of the answers no are still purple. That light blue is the answers of yes. So this graph clearly shows that in larger markets, female meteorologists feel more obligated to wear revealing clothing in comparison to the 101 to 210 market size. Now, some, some of the possible errors that happened along with the survey is that more men participated in the survey, so this could have skewed the results of my survey. More chiefs also participated in the survey, so that's also something that could have skewed the results of my survey. And I did not break down the demeaning or obscene comment question. Now, I did this for a reason, actually. I had a few people take my survey and they reached out to me. They said, you didn't break it down. It's not necessarily scientific. It's all up to me. It's all relative. And that's exactly what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be something that's relative. So if you believe that you receive demeaning or obscene comments, that's what I wanted to hear from you. It's all relative. I know it's something that is based off of your opinion. I didn't specify that though, so I do wish I actually did specify it and said, 
hey, this is all relative, I understand that, but I want to hear your opinion on this topic. In conclusion, women receive more <coughs> obscene and demeaning comments in comparison to their male counterparts, and more women feel obligated to wear revealing clothing on air, 6% to be exact. We also did see women in larger markets do feel more obligated to wear revealing clothing on camera. And out of all of the people who selected chief meteorologists as their job at description, only 18% of them were women. So we did see quite a disparity in the chief role alone. And I would like to acknowledge my former professor, Fred Reamer, and my chief, Mark Stitz. Both of them have helped me put this uh, table and graph and everything survey together, so really appreciate them. But overall, does anybody have any questions for me? Thank you so much for your time. And I'm very nervous, so I'm sorry if I ran through that too fast. You did great. You Thank did you. Great. Very interesting work. Now. Um, uh, Disclaimer, I worked in Spanish language TV, right? For 18 years uh, of my career, I worked in Spanish language TV, including in the 1990s, uh, when I, I, became, I was the first degreed person to ever work, in, in, regardless of gender, in Spanish language television, which means that there were a lot of non degreed people, mm -hmm. and they still had to backfill for the other positions, and I had to train a lot of uh, women because they preferred women, so, where, where am I going with all this? Uh, did you break this down as far as the pressure to wear revealing clothing uh, for Spanish language stations versus English language stations? Because my experience is that they definitely pressure the women to wear, at least they used to, sorry, Nate, if you're still here, they used to pressure women in Spanish language TV to wear revealing I actually did not, but that's very fascinating, and I should actually do that. Okay. I left my survey completely anonymous, so my demographic questions did not ask anything about what city you were in or what station you worked in, because I didn't want people to feel uncomfortable answering some of the questions, especially the ones about the revealing clothing and the terms and everything like that. But I am very interested in sending out another survey, hopefully reach a broader audience at this point in time, so we're able to see some more results, and I can maybe break it down at that point then too. That's a great idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you guys so much. It's truly an honor to be here.